Hey everyone, I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in healthcare IT. And today we have two wonderful guests. We have Sudish Mowgli, he's the CTO at Healthcare Triangle, and Dr. Stephanie Lar, CIO and CMIO at Monument Health. Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, so I'm excited to have a discussion today about, you know, an interesting process, you know, project you did to automate some of the challenging things that no one wants to do. But before we dive into that, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, Healthcare Triangle. So, uh, thanks, John. Uh, I'm Sudish Mowgli. I'm the Chief Technology Officer and uh, Healthcare Triangle is a cloud and uh, data solutions company. We are, um, you know, we specialize in the healthcare and uh, life sciences verticals. And uh, we have a portfolio of platforms and solutions um, as well, which plays in the areas of cloud, data, and artificial intelligence and machine learning. Awesome. And Stephanie? Yeah. So again, also happy to be here and share our combined story. Sure. Um, I am uh, an internal medicine physician by background, but I am the CIO and CMIO at Monument Health. So we are a not-for-profit healthcare system based in Rapid City, South Dakota and um, facing many of the same challenges as other organizations um, related to, to staffing and workflows and all those kinds of things. So excited about this conversation. Yeah, so tell me about that. What are some of the ongoing challenges that are posed by these paper and manual processes? Yeah, so you know, in healthcare, we have a lot of manual paper processes still. And, um, and one of those is faxes. You know, I think we were all very hopeful as we entered into the era of, um, uh, you know, even through meaningful use. I think at one point there were questions about, oh, we're going to get completely off of we'll paper. Paperless. And we're, <laughs> yes. And I think we all suddenly realized, eh, it's probably a loftier goal than we really thought. Um, and so here we are, you know, we have a lot of really great electronic processes, but we still have a lot of faxes to manage. And so um, really it's a great opportunity for a healthcare organization to start into their journey on machine learning and AI and those kinds of things in this kind of a space because it's low risk uh, from the standpoint of it's not at the direct clinical care delivery line and yet it really improves the workflow for so much of our staff. Our health information management staff is spending potentially hours a day sorting through faxes and other kinds of, you know, fax-like documents mm -hmm. that come in and sorting and managing them. And so it was, it was really a process that was ripe for automation. Um, and so we partnered with Healthcare Triangle to take our experience on the workflow side and our knowledge of what we needed it to do and what systems it needed to integrate with and their technology and, and machine learning and um, data management uh, uh, history and, and experience and bring those two pieces together. So. So Great. Sudish, is that what you see with your other customers? I mean, that they all have this, you know, overwhelming number of faxes, a lot of people doing manual labor that they don't really want to do. Is that what you hear? Yes, absolutely. And um, so uh, we, are, we are seeing a lot of that with uh, all our different customers. And it's all about digitization and taking that paper-based documentation and moving that into the, into the you know, digitizing them. And uh, you know, th and then putting that through the workflow for indexing and categorizing, we are seeing a lot of that. In fact, uh, with the pandemic, it's actually becoming um, all the more accelerated because a lot of uh, with remote work, a lot of people are realizing that the paper-based documents don't help them much when people are not going into the office where the documents mm -hmm. are stored. Yeah, that's so true. that is kind of accelerating this, and. Um, and the advantage of digitizing, a lot of customers are starting to see, and I'm sure um, Dr. Lara is also uh, starting to see this, is by digitizing those documents, now you can actually start to apply analytics to data that was in paper, and now, now by digitizing it, now they're, they're able to do more with yeah. that, and also save, save on, on um, storage costs as well as and continue to remain in compliance. Interesting, so more efficient and the analytics behind it to yep. understand where are we at, that, that's fascinating. So tell us, Stephanie, what is the current process? Like how has it evolved? You know, where are we at today? You know, yeah. what did you do to address these challenges? Well, I, I think it's, it is a great story to tell because the, the important part is we're not totally done, okay. but we're in the middle of it. And I think one of the things that we sometimes do to ourselves is we, wait to turn things on until it's perfectly ready. 
and um, and machine learning is not an area where you can do that. I mean, no. by design, by nature of what it is <laughs> we're trying to do, <laughs> you've got to get it on and you've got to start collecting some information so that that learning can happen. And so that's been a great education even for us and our teams because we're used to this very plug and play. We identify a solution, we implement it, we turn it on, and the end users expect that what it's gonna happen on day one is what it's gonna do forever. Mm -hmm. And the amazing thing about machine learning is that's not the case. It's gonna get better and better, mm -hmm. but it also means that there's some um, communication to happen around this process. So what we really did was, again, we took a process that was very manual. So um, a, a fax would come in either on paper, most of them were still Digital were digitally facts. available. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they would be reviewed by a person, categorized by a person, and filed into the appropriate location by a person. <laughs> so hours and hours a day of human capital being spent on that. And to be honest, while we didn't hear a lot of complaints about it, it's not the kind of thing that people get up in the morning and say, I can't wait to go manage those taxes. <laughs> and with staff retention, that's yes. a problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, um, so what we started with first was really just being able to um, separate them into categories. So the upload is still somewhat manual uh, because we need the systems that we're uploading to and from, so in our case, OnBase and Epic, mm -hmm. to be able to, to do that in an automated fashion. We're working toward that and we're, we're in those, working into that phase now. But again, starting with where we're really trying to go and how can we get up and moving was to begin with, let's just take the, the segmentation part out. Hmm. So let's have it read who that patient is. What kind of document is this? So if we know those two things, then it, the machine learning can put it into the appropriate proposed location. Then we, again, we still have a person going Verify. in and doing the quality review and saying, yep, that is an imaging document for this patient that needs to go here, or that is an H&P that needs to go here. Um, but through that process, of course, the machine is learning. Mm -hmm. And so as we identify an H&P, that's not appropriately in the right bucket, mm -hmm. then the system is learning. Oh, we see this kind of variation and we need to cue that. So um, that's where we've been for the first several months, which honestly for our HIM team, even just that, even just having the initial buckets, because the majority of the intellectual energy that was necessary mm -hmm. in order to do this work is that tedious part of identifying the patient, identifying the document. If all you have to do is you know, uh, review verify. it and verify, yeah, absolutely, then that becomes a much less mentally taxing um, uh, requirement. And so that's, again, kind of where we are now moving into phase two so that we can do the upload part um, in a more automated fashion with the ultimate goal, you know, from my perspective, that we would eventually have nobody touching these. Now, those are conversations that are still internal. Sure. Um, and there's that, some that quality questions. management <laughs> and that verification, and what is that percentage of accuracy that we need before everyone will feel comfortable saying, you don't need to look at this anymore, we'll just be responsive to, you know, inquiries sure. on, on changes versus having to do it at the outset. We'll, we'll work through those things, but it's a great problem to have. Well, it just kind of reminds me that we try to compare AI and machine learning to perfection rather than to humans who are imperfect as well. I mean, you kind of pointed out that by automating the identification of the patient, you're kind of solving a patient safety issue too. Because if they attach it to the wrong one, now there's almost like a double check, right? right? The, to right. See. And we historically, and that's one thing I think that's important in processes that you look at like this is when you're looking at what does good look like, I sometimes have to remind the teams like, well, well, how are we doing it now? <laughs> because I don't think we're amazing at the moment. Yeah. And yet we set our sights on something that, again, perfection. Right. And it's like, we don't have perfection today. Yeah. And so, it's not as fast. It's not. Yes. <laughs> and so let's work toward that for sure. Um, but it, it's one of those pieces that you have to remind people that it's not going to be perfect. In fact, it can't be because it is a learning yeah. me That's mechanism. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything you'd add to that as far as the benefits of, of this automation and also, you know, how good have we gotten, right? I mean, to her point, yeah. it matters that it's attached to the right patient. Otherwise, potential, you know, HIPAA violations, etc. No, no right? absolutely. And um, 
I mean, th those are the challenges with any new technology. Is like you're you're not going to get it right the first time, but the beauty of it is that you, it keeps getting better and better. And uh, as Dr. Lar said it so well, I mean, it is um, you know don't make uh, perfection the enemy of good, mm -hmm. and um, you know you got to do it. And of course, there is. Uh, there is that manual element to being able to ver uh, verify the m what the machine is outputting and, and of course by doing that the advantage is that you are actually teaching the machine. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about are things getting better, absolutely. They are, I mean technology is accelerating really fast. The problem is, is we are not able to keep up honestly speaking, whether it's customers, partners like us, we are not able to keep up. Uh, but the beauty is that uh, it's just getting better, things are um, getting more and more accurate and um, so it's it's just, and I think the percentages are just going to get uh, yeah. much higher. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And you probably haven't heard one person say, "Wait, I wanted to do all that manual process again." Yes. No <laughs> one says <laughs> we have those faxes back. <laughs> No, it's Absolutely. amazing, right? Once yeah. we automate it, they're yeah. like, "Wait, you're getting rid of my job?" No, we're just actually upskilling you. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I think um, in this post-pandemic era of the, you know the Great Resignation and all those yeah. challenges that we're seeing, it actually. If there's a silver lining in it, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in looking for that <laughs> silver lining. And it might be a little bit of a stretch here, but for a while when we began to talk about automation in a variety of different settings, especially because we were looking at them initially in usually lower paying areas with more manual labor, that's a marketplace of, you know, of, our, of our workforce that they already feel vulnerable. They already feel often like they're going to be the first to be cut. Yeah. And so when we started talking about automation, you start those kinds of conversations, the immediate reaction can sometimes be, what I'm hearing is you're trying to eliminate my job. And so if there is a silver lining in what we're seeing with the great resignation and the challenges that we're in right now, is that we're not hearing that conversation anymore because the reality is there aren't enough people to do all of the work that needs to get done. So we have to up manage the people that we have at all levels to do the highest level work that they possibly can and then take those lower you know more easy tasks that can be automated and do that and again people nobody's afraid right now that they are going to lose their job they're more looking at how can i do the job of three people yeah. because there were three people doing it a month ago or three months ago so that has I think has been helpful a little bit because it's changed the dialogue a little and there's a little less um, hesitance uh, and a little more trust in that all we're really trying to do is make your job better. We're not trying to eliminate anyone's role. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Sudesh. Thank and thanks everyone for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com.